Multiple linear regression is what happens when we have multiple potential cause factors and we want to put them together into one equation. For example, suppose the sales price of a house is what we have and this is affected by several things, the size of the house in square feet, the age of the house, the number of bathrooms, that sort of stuff. The blood pressure of a person is affected by many factors like the person's age, the person's weight, height, number of hours per week spent exercising. All these things can influence the blood pressure. The number of tomatoes produced by a tomato plant is affected by lots of factors like the amount of sunlight and water and fertilizer the plant receives. In this case, we want to take our data and create an equation to predict the output, the response variable, given several predictor variables. So, how do we do that? All right, let's consider a very specific data set. Uh, we're going to consider this set. It's called loans.csv, and it contains data on uh, loans made through the Lending Club website, a peer-to-peer -peer site where people can loan money to other people and then get the money back with interest and all that sort of thing. So when we look at this data, we find that different interest rates were charged on different loans, depending on the details of the loan application. So uh, in general, what's going on is uh, higher interest rates get charged for people who are more likely to default and not pay back the loan amount. And so then the people lending the money lose their money. And so if there's more risk to the loan, then people naturally want a higher rate of return. So if we load this into our, load this into our uh, NRO loans will tell us that there are 10,000 different loans in this data set. And call of loans will give us, uh, that tell us that this data set contains 55 columns, 55 pieces of information about each loan. And the first thing we want to do is probably run a summary command on it and start looking through each of these 55 columns, get a sense of what's going on. All right, so let's see if we can, let, let's consider interest rates as our response variable and see if we can predict this, see if we can predict what the interest rate is likely to be given various aspects of the loan. Uh, we've got a lot of columns to look at. We got over 50 possible possible cause factors to try to understand this. Here, let's consider one of them. One factor is inquiries last 12 months. Well, that tells us the number of inquiries there have been into a particular applicant's credit history during the last 12 months. Usually, people with a lot more inquiries tend to, well, sometimes that indicates a more riskier loan. Uh, so what do we do? Well, step one is we want to make a plot and look at it. We, if you do, we see that there's no obvious nonlinear relationship going on here. So then we can go ahead and fit a linear model based on this variable. So we got summary, LM, the output variable, the response variable is loans interest rate, and then the input variable, the X, is loans inquiries last 12 months. And what do we get? Ooh, look at that. We, we get good stuff. Okay, uh, here's all the output. We have our uh, under the estimate column, we've got an intercept of 11.8, a uh, slope of 0.275, and then uh, that's multiplied by inquiries last 12 months. We look at both, both of them under the p-values, both are very, very small, so we have statistically significant relationships here. And, uh, whoa, but when we look at our r-squared value down there, we find that this model explains 0.017, of the variation in interest rates. 1.7% of the variation in interest rates is explained by this particular factor. That's not very much. What else is out there? Let's look at another factor. Again, we have 55 columns to play with. Another one is uh, if we look at how indebted the applicant is already. This is commonly measured with the debt income ratio. Um, so uh, you take the amount of debt the person already has divided by their annual income, and then that tells you something about how, how, much, how much debt they have already. In general, a bigger number means the person has more debt. We make a plot. We do not see an obvious nonlinear relationship. So we can fit a linear model based on this variable. Summer, summary LM loans interest rate. Again, that's our Y. That's our output factor. Uh, tilde loans debt to income. And then we see what happens with that. And again, we get all of our output again. We fit a model, there's our intercept of 11.5, our slope of 0.047, income to get our, our straight line equation model. P-values, again, they're both very small, smaller than two times 10 to the negative 16, so we have a statistically significant relationship. And our squared is crummy again, and this model explains 2% of the variation in rates. All right, so these were both 
individual single factor uh, linear regressions. Now, what we want to do is include both of them, do them all at once. So notice the command up here. We do summary of LM of loans dollar sign interest rate. Okay, so we're still, that's still our output variable, but we want both of these two input variables to come in together. So we got loans dollar sign inquiries last 12 months plus, continuing, loans dollar sign debt to income. And now we can fit them together into one equation at the same time. And so notice that, uh, what do we got? So our model has an intercept of 11.0. The slope on inquiries last 12 months is 0.26. The slope on debt to income is 0.046. Uh, notice that both slopes and the intercept are all statistically significant. And this is a little better. Our R squared values are now 0.036. 3.6% of the variation in interest rate is explained by doing a multiple linear regression, by including more than one factor at the same time. And we can go on, and back in that summary LM command, I could do plus another factor and plus another factor. We can add as many factors as we want until we get a model that gives us a clue of what exactly is going on with uh, interest rates and what, what factors are important. So here's our summary. Multiple regression is a process where we use more than one input more than one predictor or X variable in order to predict our output Y variable. We end up creating an equation with multiple slopes, one slope for each predictor variable. The p-values tell us whether each slope is statistically significant, and then R squared gives us the percentage of the variation in Y accounted for by our model. 